This is a very difficult part to print because of this beak. Pieces that are like these upside down icicles here can be really tough to reliably print, partially because of this. They can't even be seen by slicers very often, so if you have many of them, you actually have to place support in here manually, doing something along these lines. But in order for that to be really reliable, you actually also have to spread support all over the place to actually cradle the piece. Right here you can see the support is barely holding on to it and as this part is grown, it has a very narrow base that then goes up to a very top heavy type of piece before it reintegrates with the main body. So in order to make this reliable, you have to actually add in support all around to cradle and kind of nest it into a well-supported position. But that is a lot of work and doesn't necessarily guarantee that the part will print reliably because in order for these supports to be removed, you have to have horizontal spacing so that even though it is cradled all the way around, there is still some potential for shift and wobble as this beak part settles into its little nest before it comes back in the part, which can create these type of wobbles within the finished piece. So how do you get around this? Well, the ideal situation would be to have none of this support at all. Just clear it all out and have a nice flat beak down there but you don't want to round off the beak. You don't want to make that a flat surface. So we went ahead and created a different way of doing it. And that different way is something like this. This is called a thumbtack. And I'm going to show you how we made them here. So within the standard model, there are several ways of getting this done. And a thumbtack is a very simple little CAD model that comes in here. This stem is one millimeter wide so that it is exactly two rounds of a 0.4 nozzle with a little bit of room there for space. But you import it here inside of something like 3D Builder or some other modeling software, and then you can move it right into position. And then this serves as a wide foundation for the beak there or other narrow feature. And then when you are finished printing it, you can just break it right off. And it's very quick and easy to process while still having a very reliable amount of support underneath it. Because since it's a nice wide platform, support automatically populates underneath it. And again, you have very little touch with the main beak, but a reliable support surface. So this is a really easy way to support these type of hanging points that would normally be quite difficult to print with auto-generated support. But that's just a standard thumbtack. And it's kind of boring because it can't always work in every situation. What if you had to reach in from the side, say for like this feather right here? It sticks out a little bit. It might need a little bit of support there, but you don't want this type of standard support where it grows up alongside the neck like this because this can fall into your print while it's printing because it has no foundation on it. So for this type of situation, what you actually want to use is a more omnidirectional type support. So for this, we created the spherical one. The spherical one allows you to orient the thumbtack basically any way that you want so that it can reach in at a slight angle and really support whatever the feature is that you happen to be messing with. So here in this case, I'll have it reach into the side of the beak. But again, you can put it over there on that feather or any other sort of feature where you need to reach around. That traditional thumbtack wouldn't work because it would embed in the part itself because it can only be oriented vertically but the spherical one still has a lot of surface area to be supported and actually cradled in, and you can reorient it to reach in from the side to support a part. But that took a lot of effort to reorient this and get it in the right spot. So if you're a little bit lazier and you don't even wanna to go to the effort of orienting that part, you can use the omnidirectional thumbtack. And this one is actually the quickest and easiest because all you have to do is kind of get it close to the main area. And since you have these multiple different spines sticking out, you align very quickly. And it's much less effort to kind of get set. You can see here, you want these cylinders to be pressed in as far as they can to the point, but still make sure they're behind or in the non-front facing area so that when you snip them off with something like flesh cutters, there can be a little bit of a pockmark in the back there because it's a lot like resin supports where you snip it off and there's still a little divot or pimple in the back there basically from where you removed the thumbtack. But this is a nice easy support which still gives you the ability to have reach around and very quick way to orient. 
I put it back here underneath the beak so that it reduces the amount of support that is needed and actually blocks some of the support underneath the chin where it's not needed as much. The support now just goes up to underneath the thumbtack and around the edges of the lips, but it doesn't use quite as much. But you can take this idea even further. Thumbtacks can be used to support these types of faces. So the underside of his chin here, if you were using a standard support, you get this type of support where you have a very wide base and you can increase the density and lower the support angle so that it covers more, but ultimately the chin is still falling into the support. So you're gonna have some amount of vertical spacing there. If you don't want that fall off and the distortion that comes from it, you can use something like a comb. And a comb thumbtack is actually quite useful even though it can, again, leave quite a few pock marks on your part, obviously. But what you do with this is you can line it up underneath the chin, like so. Get it right up underneath there. And maybe scale it down a little bit. Again, these are sized just right for 0.4 nozzles, so you don't want to scale them up or down too much. Otherwise, they'll become invisible to your slicer if you make them too small, depending on your nozzle size but you shove it right up underneath the chin there. Make sure it follows the line of the chin so it's along the lowest point of it. And then place it right in like that. And now you have five small sprues that have to be removed rather than having the whole entire bottom of the chin being distorted from falling into the supports. So this can actually be quite useful, but it depends on your machine though. This isn't always the best option or better than standard supports, but it can be. If you have something like the arm of a character or like the fingertips of a character that you wanna support, this is a way to have all five fingers at the end of these sprues and then you just trim the nails of the fingers so that you get more detail from those fingers of that action figure you might be making. So this is a good reliable support where there are multiple small hanging points or a long bridge area like this where you wanna have the support spaced off from and you don't mind the pock marks from this. Ultimately, again, using thumbtacks is a lot like using the supports inside of resin prints, but for an FDM application. These supports are going to be available on our Patreon, which we have just gotten started. So if you wanna go over there and download them, you totally can. And let us know if there's other types of features or other styles of these that you'd like to see. These are the ones that we use most often in production jobs and that kind of thing because they are a really good way for supporting these type of narrow tapered features that generally don't work very well with auto-generated supports. Give us a like and subscribe, and if there's other topics that you'd like to see, try to comment them down below and we'll try to get them covered. Have a great day, everybody.